I'm going to take you to a live press conference Clear, now between Israel's Prime Minister and his British counterpart. Let's listen in. I think the fact that you came to Israel tells us a lot. I said to President Biden yesterday that there's one thing more heartwarming than standing with Israel. It's standing in Israel. And the fact that you came here to do that uh, is a very strong statement of support, which we deeply appreciate. Uh, Chancellor Schultz, who also visited here, called Hamas uh, the new Nazis. He was right. You fought the Nazis 80 years ago, uh, resolutely, uh, and the entire world supported your action. President Biden called Hamas worse than ISIS. He's right, too. Hamas are the new Nazis. They're the new ISIS. And we have to fight them together, just as the world, the civilized world, united to fight uh, the Nazis and united to fight Hamas, it must together now stand with Israel as we fight and defeat, defeat Hamas. This is not merely our battle, it's the battle of the entire civilized world. It's the battle of uh, Israel, it's the battle of the moderate Arab countries, it's the battle of uh, Western civilization, the battle of the free world, the battle for the future. We have here two forces. One is an axis of evil led by Iran through Hezbollah, Hamas, and others that want to bring back the Middle East to the Middle Ages to an age of bonded, bondage and war and slavery and annihilation. And the other force is the forces of progress uh, and humanity that want to push the Middle East into a world of peace and prosperity. We were on the cusp of expanding that peace and destroying that move was one of the reasons why this action was taken. We have to resist it, and we have to win. Above all, we have to win. We have to release the hostages. You have nationals. Understand that, I know you do, that we have their children, babies, women, uh, elderly, Holocaust survivors, and your nationals. And we have to work together in every way possible, and we're doing that, to get them back. I appreciate the fact that you also sent some military forces into the region. We discussed uh, practical cooperation on many fronts, and I value that very much. Eighty years ago, eight years ago, Prime Minister, the civilized world stood with you in your darkest hour. This is our darkest hour. It's the world's darkest hour. We need to stand together, and we want to win. And this is why I support, I value your support, and the fact that you're here, we must win together. That means that this is a long war, and we'll need your continuous support, continuous support. There'll be ups and downs. There'll be difficulties. The people here are united. They're prepared to take the necessary action. I've never seen the people of Israel as united, more united than they are now. But we need that unity across the board and continuous support as we prosecute and win this just war against the modern barbarians the worst monsters on the planet. Thank you, Rishi, for coming here. Well, Prime Minister, thank you for your warm words and for welcoming me to Israel. I'm just sorry to be here in such terrible circumstances. In the last two weeks, this country has gone through something that no country, no people, should have to endure, least of all Israel, which has lived through some of the most awful scenes, the specter of violence and terrorism every day of its existence, and I want to share the deep condolences of the British people and stress that we absolutely support Israel's right to defend itself in line with international law, to go after Hamas, to take back hostages, deter further incursions, and to strengthen your security for the long term. Now, I know that you are taking every precaution to avoid harming civilians in direct contrast to the terrorists of Hamas which seek to put civilians in harm's way. But I also want to thank you for the support that your government has given to the families of British nationals caught up in this horror, including your efforts to release the hostages, secure their release. And I know that we will continue to cooperate, particularly with regard to the British nationals that are involved. Can I also say that we have seen the scenes over the past day that have shocked all of us? particularly at the hospital, and we mourn the loss of every innocent life, civilians of every faith, every nationality who have been killed. And we also recognize that the Palestinian people are victims of Hamas too. And that is why I welcome your decision yesterday that you took 
to ensure that routes into Gaza will be opened for humanitarian aid to enter. I'm glad that you made that decision. We will support it. We're increasing our aid to the region and we will look to get more support to people as quickly as we can. Uh, the last thing for me to close on is this. You describe this as Israel's darkest hour. Well, then it's for me to say I'm proud to stand here with you in Israel's darkest hour as your friend. We will stand with you in solidarity. We will stand with your people and we also want you to win. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We must win together, the message there of Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu saying this means a long war, standing alongside his British counterpart, Rishi Sunak. He went on to thank the UK, saying we appreciate that you sent military forces to the region. He said that the battle was one in which Israel was fighting the new Nazis, the new ISIS, a battle, he said, of Western civilization against an axis that wants to take the Middle East back to the Middle Ages. For his part, Rishi Sunak offered his absolute support, the UK's absolute support for Israel's right to defend itself in line with international law. Well, let's bring in Alan Fisher, who's live in Tel Aviv. So, Alan, distilling that, solid support from the UK, although he did mention in line with international law, but we did not hear any criticism of some of the Israeli tactics that international Israeli human rights groups, UN experts, are calling violations of law in Gaza. And Benjamin Netanyahu knows those days are coming because you can tell from his statement saying we will need your continuous support. And now I'm paraphrasing, I didn't get the exact quote down, but essentially there will be dark days and difficult days ahead. We need your continuous support. It's like saying when we start to get criticism for some of the things we do, you can't disappear. Uh, Rishi Sunak making it clear that they support any action within international law and yet no comment on the, the, the decision by the Israelis to shut off power, to shut off water and to stop food going into Gaza, which, of course, many people would regard as a breach of international law. He welcomed the fact that they were going to let aid into Gaza. Uh, there is the question, too, about people who also hold British passports who are trapped in Gaza and can't get out. Uh, and, and so that is an issue that will have to be addressed very quickly as well. And as you rightly say, no question of, of uh, Rishi Sunak calling for a ceasefire, a humanitarian window to allow aid to be allowed into the country, instead expressing his support and saying once again that the Palestinian, the Palestinian people are victims of Hamas as much as the people in Israel are as well. All right. I want to thank Alan Fisher for recapping what we just saw there between the prime ministers of Britain and Israel.